everyone. This is Bill Griffin. Welcome to the Different Tag Podcast. Today, I want to talk about public schools, what parents ought to think about doing about them. Um, I live in Gwinnett County, Georgia, and I've paid attention to what's going on across the country, and I think that it, what's happening in my area is uh, pretty similar to what's happening across the country. You've seen in the last year or so many examples of parents being very upset at their um, at their school board and their administrators and a lot of friction and some people are getting arrested and all this sorts of things because they're upset about what's happening in the schools. So I have reviewed what happened in uh, Gwinnett County. I reviewed the board, uh, the videos of the board meetings. And I've learned some things I didn't expect to, and also did some other research, and I wanted to share that with you. So this will be a two-part uh, subject. We'll take two episodes. So this is the first part, and I'm going to go about this where I give you some background of Gwinnett County, the dynamics with the school board, the, the four things that parents, I think, are upset about, which are they uh, were happy with uh, a lot of parents weren't happy with going back to in school learning. A lot of parents were not happy with um, the filing of their superintendent who had been there a long time. Gwinnett County is supposed to be one of the best school systems in the country, and they they weren't happy with masks. And the last thing is a lot of parents learned that their children were being indoctrinated with the idea that systematic racism exists. And some people call this critical race theory. So those are the things that that I think were, I mean, parents get, other people were upset about a lot of different things at the school board meetings aside from these four things. But these were the four major things that occurred over the last uh, 18 months or so. So I'll give you a little background on Gwinnett County. It's a million residents. The school board is composed of five members. It's the second largest, uh, or the first, the, it might be the largest uh, school district in the state of Georgia. There's 159 counties. There's five members on the school board, and their names are Everton Blair, Mary Kay Murphy, Steve Knudsen, these people were holdovers from the last term. The most recently elected board members are Karen Watkins and Tarice Johnson. So those those people were installed in January. And prior to their installation, parents were very upset, uh, some of them, many of them, about the fact that there was no um, that, that there was uh, no in school learning, so they were pushing the board to do this, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of calls for, from parents to do this. And the interesting thing is, the teachers were pushing not to open the schools out of fear that they would contract COVID nineteen, which I think is kind of ironic when you think about um, uh, your nurse, nursing or healthcare workers, to teachers. You know, most people think of them as noble professions. And I know uh, there's teachers that would have uh, been fine with in-school learning, but a lot of them weren't. And um, where we, as we think of um, healthcare workers as heroes for jumping in and when the, uh, they weren't sure what was going to happen when the um, COVID-19 started to spread, they were, uh, they were, uh, went into work and treated their patients and so forth and so on, but the teachers uh, stayed away. And, and some of them continued to want to uh, stay away and not go into in-school learning, and it's kind of a given that in-school is uh, preferable for learning than virtual learning. Um, 
for many, many, many students, that's the case. Maybe not all, but many, many uh, prefer, it's better for them. Uh, so they're, um, they're not, you can't classify them as heroes like you would with the healthcare workers. Uh, so the two, uh, fortunately for parents that wanted in-school learning, they were able to accomplish this prior to Karen Watkins and Therese Johnson getting elected because in my opinion, from what I've seen during the, the uh, board meetings, they would have been opposed to, um, they would have sided for those teachers that didn't want to, didn't want to open up. The second thing that a lot of parents were concerned with in Gwinnett County was the school board superintendent. His name is Alvin Wilbanks. Gwinnett County is supposed to be one of the better schools in the, uh, in the United States. Uh, he was uh, immediately targeted by the chairman, Everton Blair, and the two new members of the school board, Watkins and Johnson, to get fired. So this is from the Gwinnett Daily Post Headline, J. Alvin Wilbank's future is GCPS superintendent at the center of debate. There are petitions circulating, uh, so forth and so on, and people were calling for him to resign. And he is quoted as, him as uh, or says that he told them he isn't yet ready to leave on his own accord. Quote, I've never worried about my job, Wilbanks told the Daily Post. Quote, I give 100% every day and I work at the pleasure of the board. If that's not what they want, if they get three votes, they can change that. So these two new members wanted to fire uh, Mr. Wilbanks. Um, many of the meetings had parents and also there were petitions circulating saying that, um, that he did not, uh, he wasn't the right man for the minority community um, without getting into too many details. That's kind of the gist of what they were saying. So people were um, uh, crossing swords over this. One side wanted to keep him, one side wanted to get rid of him. And uh, the three board members voted to relieve him, fire him in March. And his last month was uh, July. The three members that voted to fire him without cause gave no explanation, and the two that voted to uh, against the motion to fire him were uh, adamant that this was uh, the wrong thing to do, and uh, expressed so. In uh, the same article in February, prior to being fired, this is what Mr. Wilbanks um, is quoted as saying. It's just one of those things. You have two new members who think they know everything and listen to no one. They won't change, but do not know what change they want other than my resignation. Civic service is a foreign term for them. They want power and control. End quote. So he was uh, Mr. Wilbanks. Alvin Wilbanks is his name. 79 years old, been there 25 years, was fired without calls. A lot of parents upset about it, and in typical uh, southern passive-aggressive fashion, um, oh, he was not also, uh, there was no replacement uh, in line for him. They, were, they fired him and then commenced a search, and they have since hired a new superintendent who is, is one board member is going to be better for the school system in terms of making sure it's more inclusive and equitable and diverse and that sort of thing. Um, the, as I said, the last uh, meeting that uh, Mr. Wilbanks was at, he was uh, praised, lauded, congratulated, standing ovations and that sort of thing. Even at the same time, they're basically giving him the middle finger. So 
those are the first two issues that parents are really concerned about. The third issue is math. Before I get into that, I want to kind of explain what I saw, what I learned when I was uh, uh, looking at these, uh, these videos. So I described the school board meeting, the format. It, they're, um, they're five board members, and I'm, I'm going to play some videos, and you can see they're spaced apart pretty considerably. They're masked. I think they went one meeting without mask in the summer of 21. Uh, the masks are very convenient because um, you can't, you, they can hide their faces and it looks like they're hiding and that's the impression the public will always get. They're, they're not very courageous because people are walking up and they're using microphone uh, without mask, but um, the, uh, the board members hide behind their masks. The, at least it's very convenient, and, and that's the perception. Meetings have a lot of pomp and circumstance. As I said, they start these meetings with, uh, with uh, invocation, uh, color guard. There's uh, lots of speeches, flowery speeches, a lot of awards given out, and a lot of presentations. Um, these presentations are always, um, they're done by people in the community, politicians, administrators, um, heads of departments, and teachers, student groups, and they're, um, they're uh, very, um, they're, uh, there's a lot of, patting themselves on the back, to be honest with you, when you see these presentations, especially by administrators and so forth. Um, the, and then at the end of the meeting, there's time set aside for public comments. So the, the audience is separated. They're social distancing. They're pretty far apart. And um, often over here, uh, well, during the public comments, a lot of people are, are upset, and you hear a lot of uh, a lot of times the meetings are stopped because people are upset in the back of the room, or there's arguing between people that had just uh, spoken or some other sort of issue. The there's also in all these meetings and throughout and other uh, research I've done, these words are used a lot in different contexts sometimes, but the words are used. Racism, racist, systematic, systemic racism, anti-racism, equity, equality, educational equity, diversity, inclusion, colonizing, colonizer, multiculturalism, supremacy, white supremacy, black and brown, people of color, demographics, and you get the gist. It's a lot. It's, by, it's for people that say there is systematic uh, racism or systemic racism, and there's uh, people that, um, um, that are, don't want their children indoctrinated into thinking that will actually say things such as, well, I moved to, one of the reasons I moved to Gwinnett County was because it is a diverse county. Uh, the interesting thing is, and um, this is a video, there's little talk of discrimination, the, uh, or incidents of discrimination. So I'd like you to see that. What I would suggest to you Instead of having divisive issues being taught in school or suggested in school, because the last case I dealt with a little while ago, a young white kid blew his brains out because someone called him a colonizer. Now that's just as bad as calling a black kid the N-word. If we are as parents and we care about our children, then we should not sit here and subject our children to hatred and bigotry that we are teaching them. That's right. So school should be the place where they learn how to invest their money. 
learn how to get together and create a company so by the time they become 25, they can be self-sufficient and live their own American dream. School should not be a place where they are labeled as racist or a colonizer or you black and you will never ever achieve anything. That's a lie. So I suggest to you, bring unity, partner back with us, and let's save our kids. Because the last thing I want is to hear the story of any one of y'all children dying over BS. God bless everyone. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So the third, and as you can see with that, she, she's not um, for going to the third thing. You can see she's not, um, it, it's interesting that the per, a person who insists that there's systemic racism also insists that the school district has had no incidents of uh, discrimination. So the, the, uh, the two things uh, are uh, conflict. The, Next thing that uh, I want to talk about that parents were upset about is masks. So there's a lot of um, egging of the board by parents. A lot of people really upset about the mask and wanting to remove the mask because there is a mandate. There is a mandate to this day. And uh, I am doing this podcast as of uh, December uh, 21. And so... As I've said in a, a video before uh, regarding Dr. Fauci, he and the CDC and the media never uh, state that there's a statistical difference between the schools that mask and the schools that didn't mask. We know there can't be because if there were a statistical difference, these folks would shout it from the rooftops. These uh, school board members, when confronted by, by parents about masking and they're begging them to get their mask off the kids, uh, the administrators or, or the school board um, and administrators will never it, state that there is a statistical difference. After all this time, there's so much data available on that. And a, you would think the onus would be on the school system to demonstrate to the parents that the, the, that the benefits of masking outweigh the cost. Their attitude, in my opinion, is that there really, is, there really isn't any cost or that the costs are so small and the benefits are so great. In a meeting in September, a doctor, or, I'm sorry, the, a work session meeting in September the, uh, in, to the school board, a Dr. Debbie Durant spoke for 30 minutes, and she spoke for 30 minutes about um, what was developed to track um, cases. So, during this 30 minutes, there is no discussion of criteria to end masking, none. Neither is there any discussion of um, it, it, what I was saying before, make your case that it is necessary, especially in light of the data that exists throughout the United States and in, in fact the world so that occurred in September. So the kids were masked, even five-year-olds were masked through the end of the year. And in my opinion, if you're going to set out to torment five-year-olds, six-year-olds, physically, mentally, emotionally, mask would probably be a good way to do it. It seems rather sadistic to me to send kids to school with masks on um, when they're at such low level. I just don't understand how you do that, but that is what is happening. 
the latest on this is in December. There is a uh, another work session meeting, and Associate Superintendent Dr. Al Taylor uh, stated that they were adopting a criteria, and um, lack going into the criteria if the if the case load was low enough, then there was going to be uh, a drop of mandatory mask to uh, come to school to strongly suggest or strongly recommend that the kids wear masks. And uh, so that what that indicates is that they might just go back and forth. Mask on, mask off. So especially in light of the, the strains that will undoubtedly arise. There's no, just no concept from these folks that they owe the public or the parents, even after they're begging them to get rid of the mask, any sort of rational explanation to do so. So there's a, there's a video that went viral on national wide media. I'd like to see it, uh, I'd like for you to see it. It's about mother who is um, distraught over her smaller child being masked every day. But it's April 15th, 2021, and it's time. Take these masks off of my child. And I know what I'm going to be met with. But Ms. Taylor, the CDC, we did not vote for people at the CDC. We did elect leaders who do create policy. We elected the five of you. We chose you to make difficult decisions for our children. We chose you to make decisions that would be in our children's best interest and in forcing five, six, seven, eight, and nine-year-old little children to cover their noses and their mouths where they breathe for seven hours a day, every day for the last nine months for a virus that you know doesn't affect them. That is not in their best interest. And this has to stop. Defend our children. My six-year-old can't come up here and say this. It has to stop. Take these off of our children. Um, I know I'm being redundant, but the idea that you can't even explain to parents uh, what your rationale is for these masks is just... Um, um, it's really indicative of how these folks think. And some of them, I believe, are just out for a uh, political, uh, to move up the, into another political office and that sort of thing. Um, well, this is the end of part one regarding the schools uh, topic uh, in Gwinnett County. The um, the next episode will deal with what uh, I think parents are most upset about is the indoctrination of their children. And I have some conclusions that I'd like to share. So I hope you will uh, join me for that. I really appreciate you listening. And uh, please check out our website, the platforms we're on. If you have any comments for me, I sure would like to hear them. Thank you. Thank you.